There's an AI app from Google that is now my favorite AI app of all time, and I use it even more than ChatGPT. And I know that is a very bold claim, but I think once you watch this quick demo, you'll agree with me, and then I'll show you exactly how to use it in more detail with more examples. This video is sponsored by HubSpot. More on that in a bit. Hey, I need a quick accounting help. Can you see my screen right now? Yes, I can see your screen. What do you need help with? So I have these expenses here inside of my QuickBooks, and my team also sent me this expense report. I need to match this to make sure nothing from this expense report is missing inside of QuickBooks. Okay, so you want to compare the expenses from the spreadsheet with the transactions in QuickBooks to ensure no expenses are missing. Is that correct? Yeah, exactly. Okay, I understand. Would you like me to help you do that, or were you just stating what you're about to do? No, I'm asking you if you could just do it for me. I can help with that. Let's start with the first expense on your spreadsheet, tips. It shows a cost of $40. I don't see a transaction for tips with an amount of $40 in your QuickBooks transactions. Should we move on to the next item on your expense report, which is no, promenade? If, if, if it's missing, I got to add it. Can you show me how to add it? I actually don't know how to add it if it doesn't automatically get pulled in. Sure, I can help with that. In the top left corner of the screen, there's a plus new button. Oh, right here? This? Okay. And then? Click the plus new button and then select expense from the drop down menu. Oh, I see it. Okay. Okay, how do I fill this out? I actually don't think I've filled this out before. No problem. Let's start with the PIE field at the top. This is where you enter who you paid. Do you have that information? Yeah, I could fill that out. Uh, what else? What's this box right here? That box labeled category is where you will select the expense category this transaction falls under, like travel or meals. Okay, should it be travel, you think, for tips? While it is up to your discretion, travel may not be the appropriate category for tips. You might consider a category like meals or other expenses. Okay. What do you think? I think travel is okay for this one. And then I guess the amount goes in this box, right? Yes, that's correct. And what's this box right here? Do I need to fill this out? That box labeled tags is optional. You can use it to add labels to your transactions for better organization or filtering. Okay, got you. How, how do I save this now? Is that all I need to fill out? Yes, it looks like you filled out the required fields. You can now click the save and close button in the bottom right to save the expense transaction. Oh, okay, right down here. Correct. If there's anything else I can help with, please ask. Uh, yeah, I actually forgot to add this. Can you scan this and tell me what this is? Okay, I can tell you what's on the receipt. It appears to be for parking at Chicago Midway Airport with a total cost of $60. The date on the receipt is the 1st of October 25, and the entry date is the 1st of June 25. Is there anything else? Okay, one last thing. Can you quickly scan this entire expense report and then scan this entire QuickBooks report and tell me what's missing from here? It's clearly missing some things. Okay, I can scan both the expense report and the QuickBooks transaction list. Let me start with the expense report. Tips, $40. Promenade Oh, you don't Fontaine have to read B. it all to me. Just tell me what's missing from this. So I need to add it to QuickBooks myself. Okay, I understand. Looking at the transactions in your QuickBooks, I see these are missing from your expense report. Tips, $40. Parking, $60. One last thing here. Can you just give me the expense total here? What's the total cost? All right. The total cost for all of those expenses is $805.79. Do you have any more questions for me? Uh, let me just check that to make sure you're right. Okay. Interesting. Okay. Now this is what I always thought AI should be. Something that could actually sit over my shoulder. I've been using this for a few weeks. It's literally on most of the day watching what I'm doing when I get stuck in any software or anything that I'm doing, I just have a conversation with it. The delay is basically non-existent. The voice is extremely human, like it makes a few mistakes here. Let me show you exactly what this is. So this is called Google AI Studio. It's free right now somehow. So you could use it right now for free. You could sign in with your Google account right here. And then on the left side, if you go to stream real time here on the left side, this is what it looks like. So what it's doing is 
you give it permission to look at your screen. You could also give it permission to look at your camera. I'll show you the settings in a second. It records a little piece right here, and then it listens to you, and then it tells you what to do here in text format and in audio formatting. Let me go ahead and refresh this page. Stream real time right here, talk with Gemini Live. So Gemini is Google's model, and they just recently rolled out, I think within the last couple of days, Gemini 2.0 Flash Experimental inside of Google AI Studio. And this is even way better than the last three weeks I've been using it. And what you wanna do is under output format, choose audio. By default, it might go to text. You could use it in text format, but obviously audio is better. And then you could choose a voice. I was using Puck this whole time. The way you actually use it is down here. You wanna turn on the microphone option and it's gonna interrupt me right now. So let me just put it on mute. And then you wanna click this option right here and either share your screen your FaceTime camera or both. If you share your screen, it's gonna ask you, depending on what device you're on, I'm on a Mac here, if you wanna choose a specific window, but I usually share my entire screen. So let's choose a screen, share the entire screen, and it could see literally any tab I'm on, any app I'm on, and it knows <laughs> pretty much everything that I've thrown at it. It was actually giving me tips inside of a video editing software. It was helping me with spam inside of Gmail to tell me how to actually set my filters right. And down here, if you don't wanna to talk to it like I was doing in my example, you could always type your prompt over here. And this works very similar to other chatbots if you use any other chatbots, like I'm sure most of you use ChatGPT. So it works in a very similar way. Just your input is different. It's actually what's on your screen and it records it for as long as it needs to before you talk or before you ask it a question here in the prompt. Now you could talk this in a casual tone like I was doing, or you could use other prompting techniques and combine it with everything you know about using different AI tools. And I have a bundle of free resources that HubSpot gave me that will give you much better results out of different AI tools like this one and out of ChatGPT2 if you use ChatGPT or if you use Google Gemini, that is the ChatGPT competitor. Now HubSpot gave me a total of five different PDFs. They're really in depth and you could utilize them if you're using ChatGPT or if you're using Gemini or you're using Google AI Studio. And these should really get you better results, help you get ahead in business, solve problems and save time. So since I got a couple of businesses, this one is my favorite, the AI Adoption Playbook for Business Leaders. And this is a really comprehensive checklist for adopting AI at work. It's very step-by-step and it literally has everything you need to do in order to get the goals and the objectives you want from AI here. And they also gave me this entire 38 page ebook here that is designed for ChatGPT, but again, it works across the different AI tools that I cover on my channel as well. And these cover a variety of different industries and exactly how to get the most out of ChatGPT recently got updated for 2025 as well. So 100 ways to try to use ChatGPT today, using ChatGPT at work, the different use cases for ChatGPT. And I have a link in the description that will bring you to this page. And you get five different documents if you just put in your email there. And it's completely free. You get all those five documents. Thanks so much for HubSpot for providing this free resource for people that watch this channel. Okay, let me show you the next example here, I wanna actually work with a free resource inside of Excel, something that I'm not very good at using. I know I should be getting better at it. So I have an Excel document here and I'm really not sure how to organize this in a better way. Someone told me to use pivot tables, but I'm really not sure <laughs> what that is. So I'm gonna go ahead and start a new stream. The one thing you could do, which is really useful, is right on top over here under system instructions, you could actually type in the type of tone or the style that you want this to be. So I'm gonna say answer in short and direct responses as my instruction here. So you could leave this blank and you saw the result that I gave me the first time around. So I'm gonna try it this time with that. I'm not gonna give it access to my camera, but I do need to give it access to my screen. And I'm gonna go ahead and share my entire screen so you could see that Excel sheet. Okay, what, uh, what exactly am I looking at here? It looks like a sales order spreadsheet. It includes information about the customer, region, category, product, and order details. The font is really small here. Is there a way to zoom in? Yes, there should be zoom options in the bottom right corner of the application window. Okay, cool. Is there anything else I can help you with? Yeah, someone told me to get more information out of this or to see it a better way to use pivot tables. What exactly is a pivot table? A pivot table is a data summarization tool. It allows you to reorganize and analyze data from a spreadsheet, often to find patterns or insights. 
Would okay. you like me to explain how to create one in Excel? Yeah, yeah, tell me how to create one. Okay, to create a pivot table, first, select the data you want to analyze, including the headers. Then go to the Insert tab on the ribbon and click Pivot Table. From there, you can customize it in the dialog box that opens. Okay, if I want to do it to the entire document, can I just select nothing? If you want to include the entire document, you can select any cell within the data range. Or you can click on the top left corner of the document to select the entire sheet. Oh, I see. I selected everything. So pivot table, I'm clicking that. What's this now? That is the pivot table dialog box. It's asking you to confirm the data range for the pivot table and choose where you want to place it. Is this the whole document right over here? Yes, the data range shown in the dialog box includes all of the data in your spreadsheet. Okay, so new worksheet, do I press OK? Yes, you can press OK to create the pivot table on a new worksheet. Okay, now what? Now, you can choose the fields you want to include in your pivot table by dragging them to the rows, columns, or values areas. Oh, down here. Okay, so customer name. Oh, okay. So I make something more customizable with this. I got you. Yeah, I'm going to undo this and tell me how to actually make a useful pivot table. You pick the fields for me and tell me what box to put them in. Okay, to make the pivot table useful, drag product name to the rows area then drag quantity to the values area. Okay, that one's good. Let me, let me zoom in actually to see it. Okay, what else? Okay, you currently have the product name in the rows and the sum of quantity in values. If you want to analyze by region, you can drag that to the column section. Okay. Oh, okay, that's useful. What else, what else can I do? Give me more ideas. You could drag category to the rows area to see quantities for each product category within the different regions. Oh, that's getting better. Okay. What else? You could drag the order date into the rows area below category to see the sum of quantities by category and date. I grabbed order dates and put it where? Drag it to the rows area oh, below category. Below category. Oh, okay. I see it now. Okay, now I just want to take a screenshot of just this top area on my computer. How do I do that? You want to take a screenshot of the top area of your screen. You can usually do that by pressing the shift, command, and four keys on your keyboard. Yeah, I think I got it. So I took a screenshot, but how'd you know I was on a Mac? I made an educated guess based on the interface you were showing. Is there anything else I can help you with? Oh, I got you. Do you know how I could actually do a software update on my Mac? To do a software update on your Mac, click the Apple logo in the top left corner, then select System Settings and then General followed by Software Update. Oh, okay. I got you. Thank you. Is there anything else I can help you with? No, that's it. Just hang out till I have more questions. Okay. I'll be here when you have more questions. Okay, so what do you think? I think that gave you a big picture overview of what this could do. Is this the best AI tool available today? Try it for yourself and let me know in the comment section below. I want to thank HubSpot for sponsoring this video, and I will see you in the next one.